Hey there team, and welcome to a 56,000 frame 3v5 on the Cardolan Outpost. Um, this is an awfully long battle, and that gives me a bit of hope, because the last few Cardolan battles, well, Cardolan Outpost battles that I've been part of and I've seen, have always just been basically a battle of these three choke points. And that's a lot of fun, and you can get a lot out of that. But it always seems to be that by the time they would actually retreat to the outpost itself or to the city itself, it's there's nothing left at that point. Either the defenders have won, or it's um, it's it's over for them. So I'm I'm, I'm hopeful because of this that uh, that maybe today will be different. So Bilbo sent this one in playing as Dale, so he's got his dismount Earls of Dale. I really do like the dismount Earls of Dale myself. I um. I know they may seem sort of overpriced, and I, I yeah, I would definitely accept that. But nah, I, I, they, you can do a lot with them, really. They're very beefy and, and they're pretty solid. Uh, nicely armored up Sword Masters of Eskaroth there. Uh, only thing that weirds me out about them is you know I, I see the shield on the back and I know that they don't get a shield value, so that would definitely kind of spook me. Uh, Dalian spears there. I would expect armor upgrades. Yes, that's what we got. Athala Rangers there, Barney and Marksman, yeah, it looks like everything we've got here is armor upgraded. Royal Guard, Barning Herd, uh, yes. Bowmen there, lots of bows, which you really want as a Dale Defender, because all of these guys, the Dalian Bowmen and the Barding Marksman, once they use up their ammunition, they can be quite effectively thrown into the front lines and really do some good work there, especially receiving this armor upgrade. Dalian Spears on the side, and then some more Swordmaster Veskroth, and a lot of Dalian Spears for Belbo today. Uh, then Dalian Paladins, Catapult Crew, and Blackshot Dragon Slayers. I suspect there'll be a bit of shuffling around, but that'll so I'll stay at one time speed until uh, until I, I feel we need to. Ventral one here. So Bilbo, this was still quite a while ago, so Bilbo was pretty new. Um, but the Ventral one's been around for a while, so we'll be able to guide him through anything. Sindar of the Girdle here. A uh, very good Lancer unit. Uh, well, actually, sorry, Knight, really. They're, they're, they're anti-cavalry. Um, very low armor and no shield, so you can't really rely on them to take too many shots. But you see Merkwood in uh, Cardland Outpost battles quite a lot now. All right, zoom in over here. Good, good, good. So he's moved up with Sindar. Actually, sorry, is this, has he got two units of Sindar? No, no, surely not. Surely not. Uh, then Hiri Lang, of course, armor upgraded. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna give an armor upgrade to any of the Hiri units, the Hiri Lang should be your your primary concern. He's actually yeah, elders of the Elder King there. Sorry, I thought they were Elder King's palace guard there. I was like, oh, he's not giving them an armor upgrade. Hiri Oth there. Um, I so actually let's go for zero point seven, just in case they do some shenanigans. I don't think they will. Anyway, Ents. Elder King palace guard there. Yeah, with that armor upgrade, you'll usually always see that in a siege defense. I think woodland protectors. Hiri Peng and Hiri Peng. Armor upgrades, yeah, all around for the Merkwood forces and more Hiri Peng. And Woodland Protectors, uh, Hiri Oth. No doubt some uh, green, why, well, sorry, what, what are they called? Greenwood uh, Rangers? Yeah. Hiri Ek, Hiri Oth, yeah, always Merkwood's going to be hiding a lot in the trees. And the Ents, of course, there. So I do like the Sindar on, well, I do like Lancers on Cardlin Outpost full stop. I think you can always do some good work with them. The last defender here is MP Beckerme, playing as Kazadum. So, yep, yeah, good, solid, solid defensive factions all around, I think. We've got the Legion, sorry, Second Legion Axe Guard there, double Second Legion. Reclaimers and triple Second Legion, sorry. The Mithril Guard there, some sentries of Kazadum. Uh, yeah, good to, good to get some quality pikes to mix in with the Halberdiers of the Barding Hard. Hammers again to bad, lots of hammers. And the Iron Watch too, of course, very fearsome. So we will probably have two Rangers, uh, one from either faction, and then the Iron Watch as well. Uh, possibly even two Rangers from, from one side, that would be interesting. Warriors of Kaza dumb there, then the First Legion Pikes, exceptional, and then some more Sentries of Kaza dumb. Sons of the Fallen, and lots and lots of Sons of the Fallen there. Okay, cool, cool. No, I, I like it. I uh, got no issues with that. And Merc Crossbows. Nice. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm chuffed with that. I'm very chuffed with that. Um, you can shoot over your lines. It's actually a very powerful crossbow bolt. It's, of course, armor piercing. It's good. It's real good. 
Zooming on over here first, we have Misty, played by, uh, I was about to say Clotati, but no, it's not. It's uh, Stillo. So I just saw the C and L's, and I was like, ah, Clotati. No. Uh, so Goblin King Bodyguard there. That's where we got the general. Uh, infantry, spears, halberds, good. Hordes and hordes have been brought today, and we're seeing some crossbows there too, so if they can get some good shots into the dwarves, and they've got some dwarven allies, which is nice. See Monkey Tron bringing Erebor with his heavy, well, sorry, with his <laughs> iron foot crossbows. The catapult today brought by Monkey Tron as well, alongside the dragon slayers of Ered Mithrin. Some cave trolls there, two units. Erebor legionnaires, cave troll drummers, uh, axe guard, and... Ironfoot Warriors, Erebor Legionnaires, the Snow Trolls. You can see the speed difference. Snow Trolls are very swift. Anything absolutely crazy? I'm looking for Black Locks, really. Highborns of Erebor. I don't know if we've got Black Locks. I, I, usually on attack, you don't need them. Master Blasters here, playing as Rohan. Now, I remember there's a battle from ages ago playing on uh, Mistrand. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Mistrand. I think so. Uh, where I've got Master Blaster playing as Rohan on the defense, and he absolutely brutalized people. So um, I think people, yeah, yeah, Rohan on the Rohan on the attack. I think Master Blaster can definitely do that. He's got his civilians out front to take a bit of a beating. Eastmark Axemen behind, and Riddermark Axemen, Westmark Marshals, some spears there. Westmark Infantry, good. Yeah, this is solid. I really like this army. Uh, from Master Blaster. He's going to want uh, either the Dwarves with their heavy armor or the Orcs with their massive numbers to take, a bit of, uh, sorry, to take a bit of a beating first before he comes in, but he should do not too bad. We've got Captain Douchebag there, so I've not seen him before. Uh, so he's got his Merquindy bows, Elvelan Marksmen, and more Merquindy bows. Behind them, a lot of Elvelan infantry, Merquindy pikes there, Glade Masters, and Hammer Guard. I like bringing both the elite units, but I hope there's more hidden around. I suspect there will be. There must be some of the, the Nandor Glade Guard, I suspect. And the last attacker here is Gondor, played by 2-Up. Now, I of course know the RH clan, but I'm racking my brain to work out who 2-Up is. We've got the armor upgraded Gondor Militia, which I think look gorgeous. I really, really like the armor upgraded Gondor Militia. Then over here, actually, Pinneth Gelen Cav. Risky. And he's given them some armor upgrades too, jeepers. Um, cool choice, cool choice for sure. Uh, Gondor spears, Gondor, lots and lots of Gondor spears. Uh, militia archers, standard archers, and more archers. Jesus criminy. Um, that's a lot of bow fire you've got there too. Up, this is a bloody. This is how people used to play uh, Gondor back in the the previous version there, just with these like swarm field battle like heaps and heaps of archers. And then Gondor Infantry. Um, I don't know how I feel about that army comp. Uh, we'll get into we'll get into the battle now. Um, I suspect we'll be shuffling around for a little bit, so I will sit here at two times speed for a minute. Um, really don't know how I feel about the army composition. I think that yeah, there's especially in these, this initial area, there's not a lot of places to hide for the attack, for the defenders. So dominating them in the archer game might help but as long as ev as his allies are aware of that like if he has talked to his allies in the deployment what well, in the lobby and said look here's the amount of archers i'm actually going to bring and the boys have adjusted their army you know because of that and also they're going to take it slow that also might be a reason why we take so long because we need time for the gondorian approach to work now this is how gondor does things they do things slowly they're very you know yeah, they just, just grind you on down. So I'm I'm interested, I'm excited, but that's a lot of archers. Um, so, but I, still, he comes forward with the Gondor Militia archers. Ventral one's got to do something. He's either got to shoot it down and waste his ammunition, well, use his ammunition on Gondor Militia archers, who have received an armor upgrade, I suspect, um, if you're going down this approach. Yeah, yeah. And they've got shield on their back. They can take a good bit of a beating, really. And um, just shrug off a lot of that elven fire. And even then, he uses up the entire unit. You know, it's gone. Hey, man, it is it is what it is. And then he comes from the Gondor archers. Ventral ones then got to unload on them. And then, before you know it, the veterans of his Giliath. And that's where he's put his general. That's, how, that's where I like to put my general, too. And then the veterans of his Giliath, anyway. And the marksmen of Kirandros come on forward. 
whatever arrow fire he's still got left, he's still got to get through their amazing armor and the veterans of Gilead, but their great armor and shield too. So it's, hmm, I don't know. I like it and I don't. I I don't like it if the boys are unaware of what's going to happen. But I was kind of hoping to see like a Rohan Gondor mix here with with Rohan relying on the heavy, sturdy soldiers of Gondor to to get their more aggressive forces where they need to be. And that's, of course, not what that army is built around now. So we are actually moving on forward. Interesting. Daily and Bo's set up. People are not quite in the positions that they, they maybe need to be in. Mm. But if anybody can take a skirmish fight, it's Dale. Very much it's Dale. Uh, Goblin infantry there just advancing forward. Hey, if somebody wants to shoot at them, I'm sure the boys are not going to be too upset about that. Uh, there's not too much cav for the for the defenders. They've only really got that Cinder. And if, the, if that Cinder did come out to, to try and get a quick cheeky charge, then you can do damage to them with your range unit. It's not like coming out with a, with a Mithrandir's retinue that you're going to shrug off all that ranged fire. Um, you know, you're gonna, if you come out with a Sindar, even if it's just hordes of fodder archers firing at you, you're gonna you're gonna hurt from that. Not immediately, but you're gonna hurt. Nice sturdy line. The uh, sentries of Kazadum alongside the warriors there, and to their side they've got the Dalian spears and the Barding herd. Of course, the the men of Dale being great elf. Sorry, not elf. What well, they are elf friends too, uh, but they're being they are great uh, dwarven friends as well. Of course, these are not the dwarves of Erebor. Well, the dwarves of Erebor are over there, but uh, but still they they're aware of of um, of those of Kazadum. Sindar off the girdle coming on over. Yeah, I think this is where they should be for this stage, just if there is an opportunity, but. Boys, come on, where are those archers? We oh okay. Uh yeah, they've they've still has walked right into a nasty trap. Red Shields of Arkham Rider coming up forward, Master Blaster's trying to he's trying to make the best of this. Um but no, dude, you need to have your archers watching out for your infantry there. 185, let's see. Oh, it's such a tight range gap, but still 185. Oh my god. Um well, that could have been a lot worse. We all know that could have been a hell of a lot worse. Th that was a good move from the Venture one. Um, didn't quite pay off. Uh, yeah, he's taking a good bit of arrow fire from that. Um, two hit points. His guys aren't going to be dropping immediately. Uh, killed a few gobbles. But yeah. No, I think um, still can, can be counting himself very lucky there. Uh, yeah, he's got his gobble archers. Oh, I guess the Gobble Archers were hiding. Ah, okay, so they were nearby. He wasn't... This wasn't as, as crazy as I originally thought it was. Uh, but still, what we got over here... Yeah, this is what Gonor needs to be doing. Just immediately coming on forward with your archers. Just to... Uh, just to tease some shots out of these boys. And... Um, Hiri Peng aren't hiding. Even with the armor upgrade, the Hiri Peng will go down under sustained fire. So, yeah. Um, so what's got to be done. Just advance forward like this. Keep. He's going to want to have an infantry unit closer than he's got. I'd, I'd want like a Gondorian militia infantry like right here. Just in case he did actually come at me with the Hiri. Uh, oh gosh, sorry. Hiri, not Hiri Ek. That's Spears. Hiri. Oth? Oth? Yeah. Oth? Oth. Yeah, the swordsman. Anyway, if they came running on out to, to smash him. Now, the Venture one. Are you going to be responding to this or are you just going to tank it? Looks like he is. He shuffled, which makes me think he's going to respond. But I don't think. I don't think he is. I think he's just going to. He's. He's opening. Nope. No, it looks like he's actually falling back. What usually uh, Merc would in this position would be putting forward their Hiriak. Like, if they, uh, you know that, Merc would may not have great armor, but they do make some pretty nice shields, especially for the Hiriak. So if. Uh, if you are shooting them in the front with that armor upgrade, they can they can shrug off a lot of that damage. And um, two up might just be willing to fire into them. He might not though. I'd be very willing to fire into the Hiri Peng though. That would be that would bring me great joy if I if I pulled off a target like that. Uh, behind them, yeah, woodland protectors. Woodland protectors too. I'd be I'd be tempted to to give them a few shots. Um, just take a bit of damage with the woodland protectors because as long as I've still got what like 
60 woodland protectors in that unit, I it's not going to damage their effectiveness too much. A lot of skirmishing in these early stages. Oh god, you poison arrow fire from the Raquindi bows opening up left side so those shields well it's it's the front uh, really so the shields will be coming into effect but if uh, even if it was a little bit further over it, be, it would be coming into the left side so the shield would still be there i um yeah do you want this or not because that's poison arrow fire you kind of want to use that to scare the enemy i'd be coming up with my my avelin archers if i had any uh yeah you do you got you've got a unit of avelin archers um but they might, have, they might be coming on around still. Uh, and it might be the Marquindy Bows are the only ones with the range to stretch all the way over there. And that's why he's got to do this. He is dropping some of them, to be honest. But I think Bilbo can be happy enough with that. It's not fun. It's never As a defender, it's never fun to, to allow the enemy to just shoot at you. But there are some circumstances where you just have to let it happen. So he has actually been opening up onto these, uh, onto these militiamen. But he's decided to hold fire on it after that. Yep, so, um... Because it's just not worth it. There's just so many archers from two up. And now the bloody... These guys are not heated, needed here, Captain Douchebag. <laughs> I don't know why he sent his villain marksman over. Maybe this is the plan. To just absolutely fill this area up with archers. But, like, I'd probably try and copy what he's doing with my villain archers. Move them up through here. Just to apply the same sort of pressure uh, elsewhere. But, hey. Eh. It's not going too bad for the attackers. What are we at? Yeah, early percentage counts are just so, so negligible. Um, I guess they do count for something. These these early moves are important. It's just you can't get too stuck up on percentages at this stage. Eastmark Spears, they're actually taking a good bit of fire. And kind of what you want, you know, you, you really... These guys are not worth much after they've used up their javelins. Um... A few of them making it through to the sentries. A great target there. The Warriors of Kazadumbo will shrug off a lot of that. Uh, it's an armor-piercing strike at the end of the day, but the shields are going to be very beneficial for them. And it's worthwhile, because it's a very cheap unit of jabs. It's uh, it's a good unit for Rohan to have, the Eastmark Spears, just because, like, they're, they're there to be fodder, but at the same stage, it's like, they're also, you know, here's a javelin for you. Uh, here's five javelins, really. Yeah, coming on in. It's a bit painful again, just for for the defenders, but uh, just just holding it, holding the holding the focus for now. Um, it looks like it's a full. Uh, there's a few units back here from Belbo, Dalian Paladins inside, Blackshot Dragon Slayers inside. I would always, the furthest back I would have a unit is here. Worst case scenario, you can very easily run them inside. But then also, if you feel the need to push them into the front line, you can still get them into the front line. That's, uh, I, I don't ever like to see people pulling their elite units all the way back when they don't have to be all the way back. Now, the thing is, mincing half of that unit is going to mean it's going to take twice the amount of time for it to actually use up all of its ammunition. So it's not too bad, really, to, to just wipe out half of it. And it just slows down everybody else, because... For Gondor's strategy to work here, it's going to take so long. So, so long. I really should have had a beer during this, maybe. I know, might be too early for a beer. Oh well. Um, I, if I pause randomly, it means that I've gone off to grab something. First Marshal's Bodyguard. Yeah, I didn't actually mention this when I first saw it. It's a risky choice. Very risky choice, actually. I um, I like it. I, I'm, I'm down. I'm down for it. But it's... Uh, you got to be... Um, yeah... Yeah, okay. Because, as I say, if, if they get inside, if they do get through the lines, bang, 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 absolute, like, charge city, they're going to be wrecking shot. But, um, yeah, it's it's worrying. Eastmark Spear's still opening up. They've actually changed their target now over here to the Daily and Spearman. Uh, the Barding Herd do have, a, do have a shield, which is good. Uh, it shrugs off a bit more of that damage, but maybe need to get another unit of Daily and Spears up there soon. There are a lot of guys that can come flying on forward if they need to. Barding Marksman opening up. Now, what are the Barding Marksman firing upon right now? Just into the main line? Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, he's Mark Spears, though, damn. Like, yeah, they just want to take this fire is the issue. And uh, you just have to wonder about, like, what are you really achieving firing at them? 
You're just making them use up their ammunition slower. I'd really prefer to maybe save my ammo for a, for a nicer unit that I know is going to be more deadly in melee. So Greenwood Watcher is there. Okay, this is not something that we spotted before, but they're very swift. Um, and yeah, they'll be able to catch these guys. Yeah, okay, no, they're sort of bolted back. Um, being assassins, they might cause fear. A lot of assassins do, so those guys were shaken for a minute. So a quick little touch might have even broken them. But of course, just advancing close like that allowed the uh, militia here in the villain marksmen to to rattle into them. Don't like this little mix up here. And, and once again, I just I feel that Captain Douchebag is maybe like you know there's enough archers over here, Captain Douchebag. You can you can go and pressure another area. Maybe even if I was Gondor, I would split. I would grab another archer unit and come down here as well, just to just so that there's another place where I'm using my my stuff because. What I just worry about is the other attackers are going to get impatient. As we, we've already, we're starting a clash. And Gondor is in no way ready for that yet. Um, hmm, concern. That's a high value arrow that I'm seeing flying by. What are you going for, Ventral One? You're not the type to use your ammunition. Ooh, yeah, okay. Red Shields of Brand, fair enough. A few of the civilians taking that. Yeah, I was thinking the Venture one is definitely not going to be using his ammunition in a silly way, so... Fair enough, though, taking out the Red Shields. Reclaimer's up here now. Oh, don't, 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 don't. MP Beckerman's not going to do that, though, no, no. He's, he's going into the into the First Marshal's bodyguard, that's what he's using. Um, it's tempting to just fill up your kill count with civilian kills, but no, you wouldn't do that. Um, yeah, civilian's just going to be approaching the lines and just filling them up with bodies just taking the strain from everybody else but it's not going to do too much really they're just there for for a bit of numbers uh just basically doing the same thing the gobbles are doing what we oh gee, yeah we need we need more mass here dude party marksmen are they out yeah they're out of ammo so they'll, they'll be useful here but i would get another spearman over here now too because we're just, we're very, we're very, very light on the line. And uh, the enemy is definitely seeing that. Maybe this is kind of like an invitation to like, hey, blob up so that we can use our rangers, so that we can use our um, iron watch, maybe. That's quite nice. I like that. I like that shot. Yeah, that's good. you got a little banner there. you got the river. you got the bridges. Oh, that's good. That's, that's, that's artistic there. So, <clears throat> sorry about that. Yeah, approaching here. We, we've pushed a gap in here. We've sort of busted the line. But uh, but they're not really going to be getting that many kills is the issue. And if you're not going to be breaking through and you're not going to be getting kills, then you know, what are you doing? What's this? Medicel Guard have actually gone so close. What is shooting? Uh, oh. Are you sure you can't get a shot in the Medicel Guard? Oh dear, I'm, I'm actually going to have to clear my throat properly. Brace for impact, guys. I'm sorry about this. <coughs> there we go. Very nice. That's much, much better. Uh, Elder of the Elven King. Yeah, I'd, I'd be going to the Medicel. Oh, they are very bloodied, so it does look like they have taken a lot of fire, and they, they are really quite low on numbers here. Um, which is a shame, because these guys are really useful in the fight after. Uh, but now that they are a smaller unit, they can just keep on eating those jabs. Warriors there. You want the sentries, of course. And the sentries are coming, and he'll he'll change his target. Going for the sentries. Oh, dear me, what are we at? 7 for 12, so we're still ahead, but... Oh, you look at what the enemy's lost, though. Um, First Marshal's bodyguard, there's no safe place for you, dude. Ooh. Okay, well, this will extend the lead for sure. Yeah, we've seen some civilians breaking there. Um... Is, was that just one volley? Is he going to give another? You no, know, he's falling back. So as soon as they reared their heads, they were shot back by the goblin archers. You know, they can shrug off that fire all day, though. Talking about shrugging off fire. How are we doing here? Oh, come on, boys. We need to we need to apply a constant pressure here. As you know, we've, we've started to actually take casualties on the other side. I also do worry that we've maybe got too much in the way of Cav. Penneth Gillen Cav... Um, the first marshal's bodyguard. Uh, to be honest, three. Um, I'm not red shields of Arc brand yet, but I'm not really counting the red shields there. Okay, uh, it's not. It's not too bad. It's not the end of the world. I just, 
I do fear that if the enemy do fall back and we don't get a chance to use this cavalry, then it's going to be curtains. Master Blaster's got his, he's got his first marshal's bodyguard way too close there. The only thing I could think is he either did think there was going to be a breach made or he was actually teasing out shots into his first marshal's bodyguard. Which they can take a good bit of fire to their front. Nothing like the Mithrandir's retinue, of course, but they can do something. Westmark Spears coming on forward. Now, they, with Shield Ball, they could actually breach here. And, uh, yeah, the, the defenders have just been a little bit too slow to, to reinforce this. Kiri Lang from the Venture One have even come on over. Yeah. Ah, the Venture One shouldn't be having to sort of send his infantry over here. He should, he's, he's always going to need his support to be added here with range but yeah that was such a bad friendly fire shot that was really unfortunate for master blaster um only half the enemy force remains that must be that must be rohan rohan's been coming in hard i was and i was saying at the start that i really think rohan should be the slower approach uh here do we have shield maidens actually i don't think we got shield maidens from rohan interesting oh i i, I it's interesting it's some good stuff and it's it's kind of cool that the the you know it'll be interesting to see what the gobos do with their numbers at the end of this. Um, Merquindy Pikes are coming on forward. Oh, oh wait, I disagree with that shot. I think that was maybe a quick wasted shot there, but Iron Watch are still opening up. That was an interrupt attempt, so they're falling back. I think that that was to go for the. I think they fired into the Merquindy Pikes, but it just kind of went wide. I think that that was what the deal was there. But if these Merquindy Pikes can get there in a decent condition, this could really be a turning point. Um, I see that. Master Blaster has caused this absolute break in the line. It needs to be exploited by something. If somebody had an elite unit here just slipping on through that gap, it's not really wide enough for a full unit to get through. Saying that, though, that's exactly what defenders want. Ooh, damn. Um, bit of blood there. That's a lot of gobos routing. Now, those gobos need to run away. Good. Good. I was when I say they need to run away, sometimes they'll run straight through. Ironfoot warriors slipping around. Yeah, we need everything here. We need these Dalian spears because if we want to hold this line, that's the thing. If we if we're actually wanting to hold this for very much longer, we need more reinforcements here and we need it now because this line is breaking. And we're suffering casualties for it. That catapult is there. Um it's not using fire ammunition. Uh, I would really recommend using fire ammo when you're shooting at infantry. Uh, it's, yeah, it just is going to be a lot more effective, but it's proving to be good enough for now as Rohan is continuing to be pushed back. Right, how are we doing here? Two up is, is stepping on forward. Now we can see in the mini map all of these guys. And Gondor, I'm sure, knows they're there, but Gondor does not see any of these Hiriak. He doesn't see these Hirioth. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't see these guys too. You know, it really is quite well defended. And Venture One is just constantly slipping units away. And it's going to tempt two up to, to maybe make a mistake and expose himself to, uh, to actually an infantry attack. Which, uh, of course, his archers are not ready for. Greenwood Rangers, but yeah, all of these units moving away is going to make it this very tempting uh, for, for Gondor. Cracking on in there. Spears do not too bad up against the daily and bows, but uh, you know that is just the, the hybrid infantryman, uh, with primarily archer, of course. Westmark infantry doing a great job. Uh, Sons of the Fallen though will definitely change that, and it looks like we've got a troll unit actually jumped on in here. The Sons of the Fallen will do a not too bad a job at mincing through them. These Merquindy pikes, a few of them are actually turned around the wrong way. Always something you've got to keep in keep looking at when it comes to your pikes because they do like to turn around sometimes looks like these iron foot warriors they broke in there they went uh, you know yeah tried to fly a little too close to the sun and uh, got them broken for it i was checking around here wondering what these guys were running off to but yeah i don't know oh the iron watch oh he's put his general in with the iron watch now the issue is the general's taking a bit of a beating there every time the iron watch pop their heads up the general's taking some uh, some off shots and you can see he is bloodied there that doesn't mean that he's lost a hit point though that just means that he is um well actually it might mean he's lost a hit point but he's just bloodied you know sometimes i see guys get bloodied when they just touch an enemy 
it's, uh, it might it might not be the case. Over here we do have the Penneth Gillen Cav coming on in. Ah, wow! Into the Greenwood Watchers. Okay, that's actually not gone too badly, but he's powering on through now. And yeah, break. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Um, awesome if it worked. Really, really awesome. Really bold strategy there, but it was it was too risky. And, uh, and they, they broke in there. Now, was that just one unit off them? Yeah. Now, that's why people don't really like to use, like, these mid-tier Lancer units. Or that's one of the reasons people don't really like to use these mid-tier Lancers. Just because of their morale. Just because you can't really mistreat them the same way you can the, the real heavy Lancers or, or Knights. And um, 17, they might end up coming back, but... Oh, damn, a few more of them just getting grabbed. Like, if they ended up routing quite effectively through there, that would be lovely. Imagine just having, like, even 15 Pinneth Gill and Cav over here. The defenders have to do something about that. But no, they've just been grabbed by the Herioth and they are getting minced. That's an expensive unit they've just lost. As the Catapult changes attention... Yeah, no, hold fire, dude. Hold fire. You're just not, not got any good targets right now. Looks like Master Blaster is pretty light on his feet now. He really was the first to get stuck in here. And uh, without a tremendous deal of support from the dwarves and, uh, and goblins, it's just run dry. Now, it's very possible Master Blaster came... Now, this is just what happens. Master Blaster might have joined this fight with the, with the intention of, you know, the fight taking about an hour, maybe. And uh, then when he sees the, the, the plans of his allies, he realizes, no, man, I, I, I can't have that sort of time here. And I, I, am, I am understanding of that when, you know, when it comes to that sort of thing. So that is why he went really quite hard early on, just because he couldn't stay for too long. These guys are about to get backstabbed. Good catch there from Stello, so he is turning around to meet the charge. Um, heavy Golden Spears are amazing. They really, really are good. Uh, but they will probably get... Well, they will definitely get sliced down by the Hiri Lang. Cavalry First Marshal's Bodyguard once again appearing, but trying to just sort of fight their way around in a very unpleasant area. Thala Rangers, they've taken a real smashing, but, um, you know, as long as there's a few of them left to, to use up their ammunition. They're sort of crisscrossed over each other here with the Barding Marksmen. What I'd probably do with my Barding Marksmen, in all honesty, is I would, uh, I'd probably tighten their gaps. Um, yeah, there's, there's nothing here that can do tremendous damage to them incredibly quickly. And I think sometimes if you can just tighten them up, they're, they're just a lot more effective. Of course, it doesn't make them more accurate or anything silly like that, but it just allows you to do a bit more with them. First Marshal's Bodyguard actually got a charge into the Eerie Lang. That's awesome. And now that the Eerie Lang are sort of pushing around, they're going to be exposing themselves even more of that. And once the Eerie Lang die... Oh, mercenary crossbows are waiting there. I was going to say, once they, once they die, you can slip around, but no, there, there's too much around that would be unpleasant to that. Militia have arrived. And although it's victory right now, that will surely change. Um, yeah, there we go. It's changed now. Didn't take too long. But more infantry are coming on up. And now the issue is he's got so much, so, so many archers left that have just not been used. And he's already sort of coming forward with his infantry just because that's what his team needs him to do right now. So it, it is good that he is changing his strategy. Um, you know, going for, going for what he knows needs to be done. But it's, um... It's a shame that we're not going to sort of see that really extensive skirmish strategy play out. Oh god, what's this? Oh, Fred, I thought the first Marshal's bodyguard were routing for a minute, but no, I was just catching sight of the heavy goblin spears there from Stillo. Evelyn Marksman still opening up. Merquindy Pike's actually bolting from the fight, but there's only 10 of them left. I don't blame them. So this uh, front line has been kind of muddied there. Uh, but it's it has been reformed. What are we at really? Thirty two for thirty eight. Um, both sides can be pretty happy with those percentages, but um, you know that's that's mainly been Rohirrim losses that uh, that the that the attackers have suffered. Not really too many goblins. Well, I guess quite a few goblins have died too. It's only been one or two goblin units, but the actual numbers of goblins that died, you know, is is pretty massive. Yeah, this is a good reaction here from MP Becker Me. He sees that he is under fire from Catapult, so he squishes forward into the enemy unit. 
so that even if they do pull off a good hit up against his uh, his axe guard they're going to rack up a lot of friendly fire fire arrows coming in now into the poor heavy goblin infantry that's going to be uh, pretty frightening for those low morale boys especially considering they do not have a troll drummer nearby where is the troll drummer anyway um it looks like these were the troll drummers and they were actually all shot down normally i would not recommend shooting at troll drummers but when they get that close when you can quite accurately hit them yeah do it good little mints there it's all heavy goblin spears you know it's not it's not the blooming best the best but it's a it's a good target i'd say and uh, it does look like the dwarves and Moria are uh, are approaching now to to pick up the slack that was left by um, by Rohan. Then uh, Gondor is still pushing here, but it's just not really achieving. Eh, they are racking up a few kills, to be honest. Greenwood Watchers getting around there just to throw their daggers in. And at the end of the day, this is just Goblin Infantry, well, sorry, Gondorian Infantry that have died. What I don't get right now from 2-Up is, is why is he not flooding forward with his archers again to fire into these guys to support his main line? And then in addition to that, you have those Pinneth Gill and Cav that I would be really tempted to, while this is still holding, I'd be tempted to get them up there to get a charge off into the Greenwood Watchers. Now, I know that they would react to that, you would get shot, but that's the thing about Pinneth Gill and especially with that armor upgrade, they're sturdy as hell. So, yeah, it's it's all it's all done now, of course, but even then, Pinneth Gill and Cav could, could sally up. There's no spears here. Hmm, I don't know. I just think that they, they've gone for a, a, an unusual, a very, a very, um, a very unusual roster today uh, for their forces. So I am... Um, I'm hoping to see them use in a pretty, uh, pretty unusual fashion. Darwinian sent some troops over here, which is always a tempting thing. It's always, it always feels a lot nicer to fight on the on the land bridge. I find, rather than to fight on the bridge itself. You know, the bridge itself always feels like an absolute bloodbath, a slog. It's not very fun. You know, it's it's a lot nicer to fight here. So I don't blame him for coming on over, but. When you do have three armies coming down the land bridge, that's usually enough. Gondorian archers from two up, yeah, good. You do need to spread these Gondorian archers. There's just so many of them that you need to need to be uh, getting your fingers in all the pies, really. Just um, just doing what you can. Axes coming in. Ooh, occasionally hitting. Oh, sorry. These are the Axe Guard of Erebor. Heavily armored, of course, but those axes are very high damage, so, you know, sometimes it just doesn't matter. Uh, spearmen, Dalian spears trying to stand in the way, actually getting in the way of that shot from the reclaimers. You've always got to keep in mind, you know, what are your allies, uh, you know, ranged units doing? You don't want to stand in front of them too much. Good, he has switched to fire ammo now, which, yeah, you can see it is being quite effective, but he is racking up a bit of friendly fire there. Actually, sorry, that was... Yeah... I would happily lose a few Dalian Spears if I killed a few Erebor Legionnaires, though, in all honesty. I think that, that is a worthy trade. As the Avellan Infantry are coming on forward. Damn, that's a good blast there. Onto those poor Avellan Infantry again. Gondor Militia Infantry breaking and running all the way around here. Crossbowmen opening up into the Avellan. Yeah, good target. Lots of, lots of good armor on the Avellan forces. Greenwood Rangers moving on over. Uh, slowly, though, with caution. Uh, what do you want to do here, 2-Up? You can't... Like, the Vengeful One's got to leave forces here because 2-Up has these guys here. Um, but the fact that Dorwenian has moved just about everything off of this bridge... Hmm, he might be waiting just to see the like Nandor Glade Guard. You know, there could be anything hiding there. Dorwinian is good at being sneaky. Jeepers. It's been very bloody. 42 for 48. Ve oh, sorry, attackers are still down. But so much of this power is in, as I say, Gondor's ammunition. And if we can use that well, then that's great. And this is another situation where I'd probably not even use spread formation. I'd probably have my guys just tightly packed together. One, just to make sure I could better use them on this on this land bridge. The pathfinding on the land bridge is not so great. It's not all passable terrain. There are a few spots where you can't actually stand or you can't order your men to stand anyway. 
so it's uh, it's a bit more tricky than it looks if you've ever played on it. Barding marksman cracking one in. Oh dear, poor gobbles. They're doing their best without a, without a drummer, but the Goblin King bodyguard is there now, and with that general bonus and just the, the fact that this elite unit is nearby them, then that should provide them with a bit more um, a bit more of stubbornness, you could say, to uh, to keep them in the fight a bit longer. And it's also it's it's a good good mana arms, good elite mana arms just to just to help on the front lines. Poison arrows coming in now toward the men of Mirkwood or the elves of Mirkwood. Elven King Palace Guard are always attempting target even with that decent armor value that they have. Um, lacking that shield, you you want to be firing into these guys. Actually, well, saying that they're you know they're not great armor. Uh, they are a Mirkwood unit at the end of the day. Sindar still standing their ground, waiting for an opportunity. Um. Mm, two up. I don't know, man. He, I, I just feel he needs to move. His, he just needs to be quite proactive here. Um, either just constantly making the Venture One shoot at him or, or finding a way to pressure him. But saying that, like, the Venture One has still got so much of his force ready to go. And as sturdy as Gondor is, once he actually begins a real attack, it's not going to last forever. Hammers of Gundabad getting dedicated to the front line now. Uh, but Heavy Goblin Halberds are here. And this is a massive Halberd unit. Even if uh, only 125 of them have actually reached the front lines. Uh, they are just going to be outnumbering the Barding Herd. Oh god, there's a few Sons of the Fallen that are just deep in the enemy lines. Still Poison Arrows coming on in. Got to be very wary about that Poison Arrow fire because... It does affect friendlies too, so even if a, a few odd shots hit a goblin in the back, that's his whole unit receiving that poison arrow debuff. Good stuff from the Gondorian archers there, opening up into the weaker unit, uh, or the very weak unit to arrow fire anyway, just to rattle them all down. I would no longer be interested in shooting at the... Well, they've just dropped the catapult there. I was about to say, I would no longer really be interested in shooting... I, no, no, they haven't. But still, I'll finish what I'm, I'll finish what I'm trying to say. Um... I would no longer be interested in shooting at the catapult. It's used up so much of its ammunition already. It's kind of a waste of ammunition in my mind to, to deal with it now. I think if you're going to use up a lot of ammo shooting into a unit like a catapult, you have to do it early. Um, you know, before it's really fired too much. Oh dear, Gobo's running from the front line. I suspect that those Iron Watch had something to do about that. As, uh, as they've broken. Captain Douchebag there, he's not got, he is not too long for this world. Snow Trolls coming on up, there's, ooh, okay. I like the Snow Trolls addition here. Nandor Glade Guard, they did, yeah, so we do have these two Glade Guard units that are advancing now. First Marshal's Bodyguard still lurking around. Okay, Master Blaster's still in this. I guess it wasn't the, uh, the case if he had to go. And he is slipping on through with these red shields too. I think he's just teasing this position. Just seeing what's uh, what's back here. And of course, we know this. Uh, that there, well, We know that there's nothing here apart from these woodland protectors. But he does not. So that's why he is coming through with caution. But, uh, oh dear me. Still two up is just staring these guys down. And I just think that the time for staring people down is long over. I think we need to... Uh, we need to be stuck in there. Oh, it was another cave troll unit too. So it's still, it's not just snow trolls. But sword masters are in there. Uh, sword master Vesgroth, not exactly like ma amazing troll killers, but pretty damn decent. Now how did that charge go? That charge went well. Good stuff, Master Blaster. Yeah, it's, it's risky, but he's found some good opportunities for these charges. And he's going to be able to micro the hell out of those cav too. So, um... He will be constantly looking for, for opportunities. Those uh, mercenary crossbows, though, are going to be trying to hunt him down. They've got themselves caught up on some iron for crossbows, though. He's coming around. He is coming around. Yeah, okay. Oh, you don't want to just fight the mercenary crossbows. You'll win, but uh, you'll just suffer too many casualties to really make it worth it. How are those red shields doing? Red shields just opening up, probably up on the Sindar. We're coming on through with some Gondorian infantry. We are needing spears because these Sindar are here. Yeah. At least, okay, watchers have popped up. 
he could really flood on through and, and gain himself a decent whack of territory but he's just sending through units like little bit by bit now i know it very possibly is the just how frustrating bridges are to use i totally feel for that um you know but you know you can just pack units up where they need to be and send them across earth you know one and then the other one's right where it needs to be because right now these guys are getting slammed from both sides very very effectively by the vengeful one and uh and they are wavering oh god don't break before you really actually use your worth pinneth gill and cav are trying to run on over there now watchers a few volleys from those watchers and i think they're done uh, there is a morale debuff when an enemy unit nearby actually comes out from being hidden so that's a that's a really cool thing if you can stack that debuff when an enemy gets close and jump up like four units from being hidden nearby them ah oh, damn so that was then broken at about 60 i think it was about 58 i saw and uh, they they dealt some kills they did and they piled these guys together but he's flooding on through now uh, but yeah we really could have used that all at once rather than the infantry coming through first nando glade guard are through and yeah this position has been busted i think largely down to the trolls also some sneaky cab charges and then just of course the resilience what well, was everything really uh but the resilience of the goblin numbers and uh, dwarven morale and armor be a good use of the cave trolls i think cave trolls are probably my favorite type of troll you know they're, they're very fun to use they're not incredibly expensive so like if you do end up screwing up with them it's not the end of the world good stuff master blaster oh yeah just keep slamming them here oh god oh good grab there mp becker me um is that it no no they're making it oh slippery guys holy smokes they did very well to get out of there that was a that was a well executed grab there from mp becker me uh but no oi, oi, oi. Actually, of Airborne, something needs to grab these guys before they have volley on the first marshal's bodyguard. <sighs> Pitch one. Just one quick volley and uh, and your problems are over. The axe guard are there now too. Oh dear, they're not going to be able to get. Hopefully they didn't have too much ammunition, Pitch one. But uh, I'm sure they didn't do too bad. Just a few guys getting gutted here. Final defenders off the land bridge crossbowmen running on forward still with their ammunition as i say the the attackers just still have a lot of this firepower to go glade guard trying to chase down the sindar if the sindar get sindar get some space and they need they can charge them that's not going to be fun for the glade guard and i think that is probably what's going to happen gondor is pretty bottled up here but outnumbering the elves as much as they do uh they will just be able to to force their way through and there's nothing more there's no javelins, there's no rangers. Venture one seems to be in a full-on retreat from here, which is definitely what I would do right now, apart from my Sindar. But I would try to get these Hirioth back. Uh, it's, uh, it's 21 units at the end of the day, but well, 21 men at the end of the day, but uh, it'll do something. These guys are running. So no, it was, uh, yeah, we're seeing the, the forces of Venture one coming in the backside of the outpost. So that was a well-executed route. I don't even want to call it a route. It felt like a fallback order, really. So that was nice. Ventral, oh come on boys. They have no right to get those guys back, but that might have been a kindness. Sometimes that happens. You know, we, we're not savages in this game. So sometimes you do let your enemy uh, pull a unit away, but at this situation, I would have not allowed that. No, as I say, you might, it's fast elves, and they just didn't think they could chase them down, but with cave trolls, and they were probably being fired, to be honest, they were probably being fired upon from the walls too, so it's fair enough. Anyway, it does look I'm going to get my wish. So we are going to have a, a battle inside. Palace guards still. Oh, yo, yo. A lot of elite units. A good bit of ammunition spread across the force. Wardens of Ammon Lank, these guys are untouched. Oh, good charge. Good sneaky, sneaky move. Oh, damn, one of these guys went down. But yeah, just, just mince him. Ah, damn, that was unfortunate. Sort of the corner there. Yeah, but he'll he'll get them all out. As the Master Blasters can be focusing on that unit of Cav. Just punish them. 
this is the really nasty thing about Cardland Outpost. Just if you do not get your boys back in an effective way, then it's going to be really grim. I'm going to go up to two times speed because I think we do have a bit of shuffling to go now. Um, yeah, Gondor's still got a pretty sturdy force. And over here, once he's done, Pinneth Gill and Cav too. There's 26 of them. I love their, I love their cape. They're really cool. Really cool looking unit. Um, as like as, as I state quite a lot, like I just don't take cavalry when I play Con Gondor anymore. They're just not, not worth it for me. Uh, just the infantry can kind of do the job that I need them to do. And, uh, and the cavalry is just an expense that I cannot afford. These Herioth are trying to bolt on back. I'm um, surprised the, they've not been snagged by the uh, by the bodyguard. Uh, but I guess he's maybe trying to just keep their energy up. And uh, yeah, there's no great need to just uh, devour those last few guys. So let's poke ourselves, or pro I don't know what the word would be, just uh, perch, perch, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, let's just perch ourselves up here. Um, so, okay. Now the way that this usually goes is the attackers will sort of split themselves up and now usually it is they, they, actually, they only come in two assault rooms, which is this one back here and then this one here. Those tend to be the only ones that really get applied, get pressure applied to. Usually, you you wanna you wanna go for every assault possibility you, you have, and you have four entrances, if I'm correct. You've got the two there, and then you've got yeah, you've got another one here and another one here. I would <laughs> this one's a bloodbath though. <laughs> you might not want to come in this one, but still, you've got this third entrance that is quite friendly. And um, so I would I would always recommend people to try and do that, but it's a mixture of two things. One, how long it takes you to get around to that uh, to that backside or the, the the other the far side I should say. I've already called the other place the backside. Um, takes the amount of time to get around to there, and also you want to come through with a force that can actually do something. You want to come through with a consistency that your men are not just going to get flanked around and broken. And so they can actually sort of stand soldier, soldier to soldier and actually, um, you know, keep, uh, keep that morale up. If you do come in too many sides, you split your force too much and then one of your attack routes is pretty much just like two guys and they end up bolting away. And you basically wasted those two units where you could have had them supplement uh, an attack that was actually going to work. Now, what they're going to do here, I'm not sure. They've got... Because they have this ranged dominance, still, the attackers, even... Um, I'm, I'm going to say the attackers have the ranged control here. I'm, I'm saying that primarily just because of how many arrows Gondor still has. I know that we've got those Wardens of Ammon like, but they're only five volleys. And we do definitely have a few more volleys from the Elders of the Elven King, but they, we've seen them fire a few times already. We don't have too much of that. So I'm thinking that what we're going to end up getting... There was a little bit of action back here. What was going on? Um, <laughs> a little bit of Red Shields of Arkham Brand just slamming people. Yeah, this is good. Just constantly keep them on their toes. Don't don't let them get comfortable. That's, uh, that's a big thing. But um, usually if you have the ranged advantage, you want the enemy to be bundled up. So you want to come into fewer attack positions. And we're actually getting fired upon from the walls. Here he ping opening up on... Um, what are they going for? Interesting. I guess it's, it's certainly not too bad. Uh, you can you can rely on your good accuracy. So if you've got a good shot like this, yeah, halberds, good stuff. Uh, spears from the left side, not what you want, but he's going to be going for the halberds. Yeah, he's going for the halberds. Um, awesome. Good catch there from... Uh, from the vengeful one just make them pay for that and uh, and cleanse their numbers a little bit more pull that back they've actually slipped behind in uh, percentage wise so they need to need to get that back into their favor now this is really where the defender well they sort of the attackers need to come in at the same time there's been a bit of a lack of coordination from the attackers so far and they've been relying a lot on their own individual skill which is is awesome because we do have guys like Master Blaster, who you know they they really are quite solid at this game, um, and Monkey Tron, of course, he's been around for a good bit too. 
but you can't rely on that alone now. You need to actually make this work properly. Oh dear me, that's not going to be fun to get in through there. Um, Athala Rangers are there too. Oh dear, they're out of ammunition though, surely. Yeah, they definitely are. Greenwood Rangers are not though. Uh, Daily Royal Guard, I've not seen them fire too much. Hmm. Barding Herd, Daily and Paladins. A lot of elite units for the defenders. Uh, elders, as I say, the Elders must not have too much more to go. That guy looks very cool, all bloodied up, to be honest. Kiri Peng, we did see them unload a few sh a few volleys there. And that's a decent sized unit, so they'll get through their ammo quite quick. Uh, something to note, for sure. Sindar actually playing around outside here. Okay, so it's not just the attackers that get to uh, charge away. Don't be careful there too up because the Sindar will win that fight. A charge will hurt them though, which he's kind of relying upon. Um, one good charge will, will mince through a few of the Sindar and then uh, he's probably he's probably just looking at the situation like he really isn't going to get much more use out of his Pinneth and Cav inside. You can get lucky. Uh, if the enemy really lets you, you can maybe position yourself here and backstab them or, or something like that, but the enemy's not going to let that happen. No, not with these guys. MP Becker me's there. Yeah, nah. This, this ain't going to go down the way they need it to. So, if he can use his cav now, then then great. Uh, what would you... You've got the pikemen there. I don't know if, you, if, if you've got anything. Oh, Keldron River Patrol from Captain Douchebag. I'd be tempted to come in here for a quick charge up against the Heary Peng, in all honesty. You're not really micromanaging anything else right now, so you can lend a lot more attention to the calf. Sindar coming out of here, oh dear, shoot them boys, shoot them. Um, ooh, are they going to get a charge off there? Ooh, ow, which, uh, that definitely hurt. Good move. And a bit of friendly fire from the archers now. Uh, but they're not going to be able to do that for too long. Now that the archers do actually have their number. Poison arrows too. It's more just a case of accurate elven arrows at this point. Uh, so yeah, they, they, they suffered for that, but not too bad. As I say, the defender's mobility inside of here is going to be a bit more limited as well. They can sort of set up a trap though. And especially, you can uh, place yourselves inside some of these houses. Some of these houses can be walked through. So if he wanted to, he could hide the Sindar inside of one of these. Which could be uh, could be quite effective if the enemy forgets where they are. Obviously not. They're bouncing off that, so they obviously can't hide in there. Iron Watch, how are you guys doing? Now they, oh, they always hold that though, so I never know if they've got their uh, if they've got ammo left or not. Hmm. No. Okay, Ooh, got more archers here. Uh, just kind of getting fed forward. Uh, yeah, it's um, uh. Like, you could argue how much would they have really done, but, you know, like, they're, they're just numbers, especially when you give them two levels of armor upgrade like that. They can take a beating for somebody else. Like, I would have sent them in there with everybody else just so that, you know, yeah, it, it's the same reason that people use civilians in fights, just to take the hit for, some, for a more important unit. Once again, broken. There's so many units around here, scary units too, that are just, yeah, that are just chasing these guys away. They come back from routing again, just sort of stabbing into the Thal Rangers. Uh, I don't know, man. It is what it is. They're just sort of biding their time until until they're actually ready to attack. Once again, we'll, I'll, I'll ignore anything little that happens from this point on, just so that we can actually get through to this. And, um, yeah, I've got another, I've got a d and game in an hour, so I need to make sure I'm ready for that. <laughs> um, okay, so, what do we have going on? Um, I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling about this one. It's it's it could go either way for sure. I think um, it's. Uh, I I don't think that Gondor is going to be able to use it as ammo, and I think that that's going to be a big factor for it. Uh, he does still have a lot of his infantry. He's got a lot of spearmen, which is awesome. They can do a lot. We can see this opening up from the catapult that's still got a good bit of ammo. The defending catapult's all used up. Sure. That was a 
pretty brutal charge there. Oh yeah, that was the one we saw where they got caught. Uh, yeah, it was good all the same. Uh, still, catapult opened up. Bit scary, pulled people around, but not really anything too much. Uh, once again, because of these walls, just because of the way the, the settlement is, you're not really going to be able to do too much with that catapult. Fire arrows going into these guys, very scary. Um, a few dead which is good. Woodland Protector standing by to volley anything that is very important. So, say if the Pinnathgill and Cav did come forward, they would brutalize this unit, but then they would come back with javs in their backs. Uh, I don't know, man. I think, um, what are we at? 66. Or so, so they, the defenders have pulled it back. Usually when the enemy falls back to their inner defenses, you, you want to make sure that you're a good bit ahead because you're gonna take a you're gonna take a nose dive during your initial attack again. Oh, don't you know? Don't worry, dude. Don't don't run. Like I know I know everybody's wanting to want to get this done, but you know don't don't have your boys run in there. You've saved their you've saved their fatigue really really nicely throughout this. So we need to um we need to use that. The villain infantry coming forward by them, but it's a big unit, so I'm not actually too upset about this. Risky, but um, certainly not as bad as, as sending forward, you know, 50 uh, frightened um, Gondor archers. Sending forward this many Elvelin infantry is, is certainly not too bad. Uh, I don't know. Like, the problem is, you definitely don't need it. But sometimes I do think attacking forces need a, a leadership figure. Some guy that is kind of calling the shots. He doesn't have to be... He doesn't have to be telling somebody exactly what they're doing. You don't have to be micromanaging. But the attackers need somebody that is saying, you know, attack now, stop. Attack, stop. Or, uh, you know, it's... And I, I, don't, I don't know if the attackers have that right now. Uh, when you're playing with a lot of, like, more veteran players, you don't need it. You really don't need it. Marksman Care... Oh, I totally forgot about the Marksman Care Andros, too. That's a... Uh, that's going to be some actual, like, pretty powerful fire. And up into the Wardens of Amalnak. Yep, I'm, I'm chuffed to bits with that target, for sure. Um, Wardens of Amalnak are opening up into them, which is, is good. Good use, of their, good use of both ammunitions here. Um, yep, th that's them done. So as painful as that was for two, two up, uh, that, was, that was worthy. Those axe guarding slice through poor Gondorian spears. I know they've got a lot of defensive ability because they are spearmen at the end of the day, but so much of their defense comes from that uh, that heavy armor. <sighs> Bloody throwing knives coming on in now. What we got? <laughs> First Marshal's bodyguard slipping on through. Ooh, risky. Yeah, getting shot in the back. Okay, we need to punish this now because they're coming on in. The enemy general lies dead. Right, he's falling on back. Um, mm, I do not know. Catapult there. Right, Gondorian spears stabbing away. Groomwood watchers now. Yeah, watch out. Don't expose your back too much. I know that people don't want to, like, blob up. Um, but, like, people are just coming in too, too, um, you know, piecemeal recently. You know, it's not... Ah, goddamn Sindar getting a good charge into the Keldron River Patrol. Probably going to end up breaking them, in all honesty. Uh, Weavering... The Glade Guard will hurt them if they survive. Okay, no, no, nice, nice, nice. Good Glade Guard coming on forward. Yeah, Glade Guard will mince the, the Axe Guard. They'll do not too bad against the Watchers. But you don't want those Glade Guard getting shot at. Definitely not. Woodland Protectors are opening up on something. Oh, I don't know. Uh, any Anything here is not too bad, in all honesty. Apart from, of course, the River Patrol. You do not want that. Marksman to care Andros opening up. You don't really want to be shooting for Woodland Protectors, but right now you need to use your ammunition, and they are a good target for you. They're well, they're a good like, they're a person you can hit. Is what I'm trying to say. So we're applying. This is once again kind of the issue. We're applying pressure in one area, but we're not applying pressure in the other. Which I know there is the benefit of just allowing them to, well, like forcing them to be here and standing and, and watching you. But, you know, that we need we need to uh, to keep their focus, really. 
and uh, just just standing in their way is not really doing that We've got some cave trolls and surviving snow trolls but they're not gonna last too long yeah the green wood watchers are definitely not too bad a unit to be mincing through lightly armored trolls as well you wouldn't want them to go up against uh, the Olakai or anything like that, but up against uh, Cave Trolls, certainly. I, I, I'd bet some money on my, uh, my group of Watchers there. Uh, but still, decent use of them. Uh, they'll they'll mince through them. Uh, ooh, a Sindar just waiting. Ooh, a few jabs getting swallowed up, but not too many. Nice. Coming back over here. Belville and Infantry engaging there. You need to watch their backs. One, they could end up getting shot at. Two, they could end up getting rear charged, which looks like that looks like what Bilbo is doing here. Or Bilbo might just try and catch these crossbowmen. What I would do is I'd probably catch those crossbows with uh, with my Bardy Marksman, and I'd want these Hiri off to maybe come around here and backstab the Elvellan infantry. Ah, uh, not that the Elvellan infantry are really going to be able to do too much with the Dalian Paladins there. Boys, we need we need a Dragon Slayer is good. I was about to say, you know, we need an elite unit. Now, Ere what one thing Erebor can do is absolutely birth um, elite infantrymen onto the field. We've got the Dragon Slayers, we've got the Highborns, and we've got the Obsidian Guard. So all three of those units are still going to be fed into this uh, into this formation. And as long as we use up the enemy's javelins, they're going to do a lot to uh, to really bring some pain here. Dismounted Earls of Dale are not going to be able to go toe to toe with Dragon Slayers. Uh, the AP value of the Dragon Slayers is going to be far, far too much for them. Uh, Black Shot. Oh, oh! Dragon Slayers against Dragon Slayers. That's really cool. Okay, yeah. If we uh, if we get uh, them to go toe to toe with each other, that'll be a lot of fun. Very different units, of course, but both Slayers of Dragons. Hammers of Gundabad coming cracking on through. Actually, falling back now. Oh dearie me, that's a big unit of spearmen, just broken and uh, and just getting swallowed up there. That's a real risk that you that you have when you play as Moria. Just when your guys break, they might just run the wrong way, and you know, 60 guys wouldn't have changed too much, but uh, 60 armor-piercing spearmen could have uh, could have definitely racked up a good few more kills here. Still have any targets? Uh, we, oh, out of ammunition with those marksmen. These guys will not be far behind, especially it's kind of weird considering that's a smaller unit off them, but I guess they've uh, they've had a better position, so. How are you doing? Alright. Yeah, here he peg. Decent, decent. Maybe chuffed bits with that, I'd say. Uh, Dragon Slayers, they're already down to 50. Sorry, 38. But I guess that's them getting shot in the back by the Dalian Royal Guard. Gondor coming flooding on through now. Two of the first marshal's bodyguard are remaining. Uh, if you could flip, if you could slip on through, that'd be a, that'd be fantastic. I just don't think he can. It's only one unit now left. Gondorian infantry. I'd, I'd love to engage this guy. Um, hmm. Well, what I would have really liked to do is maybe uh, get that get that first marshal's bodyguard around here because every charge he's gonna be killing something. Just one person, but still. Less guys in the field. And you can come around here and maybe just, yeah, rack up kills against these guys now. These <laughs> poor spearmen still routing, getting caught by the palace guard. At least, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a more glorious enemy to die from. Uh, Marksman Kiran just pushing far too deep there. It's just the morale issues here, dude. Uh, the morale issues are a bit too much. Um... Yeah, Keldron River Patrol jumping onto their feet now. More ammunition to be used. Halberds coming up. There's a beefy unit of halberds. Two beefy unit of halberds. Penithgill and Cav still show, still around. 26 of them. If they slip on through here. Oh, there's the Ents. Oh, dearie me. That's a break. March, why are the marksmen pushing this deep? Oh, dear. Like, this was going really quite well. And uh, had, had they stayed and maybe... You know, helped out in this fight. You know that could be nice, but the ants are just going to show up in their back and they're broken. Aye, aye, aye. Um, still, we can't say that they're not applying pressure. MP Beckerme has shown up with his um, guards of Kazadum, who are definitely worth uh, worth a worthy opponent for the Dragon Slayers or many of these other uh, Erebor elites. 
but it doesn't look like we've got any Erebor elites in the field. I think we need one. We need something. I'd get the Obsidian Guard for it myself. Uh, it looks like the Obsidian Guard and the Highborns are coming on up. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like that. You, uh, send them both on in. Quite a bit of a power move. Um, catapult standing by for Monkey Tron. I just don't know how much it's going to do. There's still the Glade Masters and the Hammer Guard remaining too. Who's, who's got the general today? The Glade... Oh, I like that. That's fun. That's really cute from Master Blaster. He's got his one remaining Metaceled Guard just standing next to Captain Douchebag's general. That's really nice. I saw him and I was like, what the fuck? That's not the general unit. Well, well. So yeah, Magutron is really getting in deep now. Glade Guard there. If they can pull off a charge, then that's always nice. They'll rack up a good few kills. Ah, oh, damn, they didn't. I know they're getting shot at too. Damn it. Ah. Yeah, because they'll die real fast if they start getting shot at. My lord, only half oh. of our force remains. That's Dale down to half of their forces now. Marksman of Care Andros trying to push up here. Mithril Guard going to be backstabbing them while this force is held back by the First Legion Pikes and some hammers of Gundabad. So, oh dear, the First Legion Pikes will hold back those Heavy Goblin Halberds all day. And the Pinnathgill and Cav just do not have an entrance. Could they? Ah, oh, damn, they're just... You could run all the way around here, but they would watch that. And they've got the Sindar waiting. Nah, man, they're 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 on the point with this defense, really. Uh, they they are watching out. Still shooting at the Glade Guard. Yeah, you can see how fast they died to ranged fire. I love the Nando Glade Guard, but you have to be so careful about when to use them. Like I'm not saying that you use them. You know, you sh they needed to get used. A unit needed to get thrown on it. Yeah. Ah, oh dear. Marks me here. Andros just sliced up there. And yeah, this front line is going to be faltering. We get some jabs in. What do we end up with, sir? Sort of, yeah, yeah, good. No, no, I'm pretty, pretty chuffed with that. And there'll, there'll be, there'll definitely be a good bit more damage done before the end of this fight. We'll probably perch ourselves here because this has been a long one. And I'll just sort of power them through to the end of it. Obsidian Guard there. Yeah, doing some good work alongside the Highborns, Merquindy Glade Masters, and uh, and the Avellan Hammers. Oh, sorry, Hammer Guard. Two have still got to come. Bit of fire coming into the Hiriek that we saw, they kind of shunted that off. Let's see, massive shield value on them, so it's pretty good. Swordmasters of Eskaroth are standing by. Dalian Royal Guard popping into these guys. Once again, um, a lot of people put their units into spread formation at the start of a fight, and then they just never take them out of it. I, I do think it's important to remember sometimes, like, okay, nothing's shooting at me, squish together. Um, just, it, it would increase the effectiveness really, these guys would be a bit better off, but I guess they would still be, they would be shot a little bit better by the veterans if the veterans did come on around. Uh, but yeah, the Glade Masters are dropping quite nicely there. Uh, 85 now for the defenders. Elders standing their ground there, the Ents have broken on through, in amongst the crossbows, poor guys, they are going to get minced. Um, What's over there? Keldron River Patrol pulling back from Douchebag, but I should sorry, no, they were routing and they just came they just came back from routing. They'll just get fed right back on in, I'm sure. The Halberd line, as many as many goblins as there are on that Halberd line, it is just getting broken down. Just pushed on through by the by the shield walling ends of the ventral one and broken, yeah. And Sindar are now free to to be a menace outside of these walls. People admitting defeat. Still Glade Masters, Obsidian Guard. There's that catapult there. Um, they're going to be a bit more pain, bro. 87%, yeah. Uh, I think we might even get up to 90, to be honest. If uh, if nobody, if people don't admit defeat, I think we'll get up to 90. The Sindar could also come around and cause some havoc. Uh, but we've got a lot of forces watching their back. I guess the veterans of his Gilead, max armor upgrade, they'll hurt some people. Hammer Guard are still there. McQuindy Pikes. Hmm. I don't know, man. There, there's, there's, there was the makings of a, an absolutely, um, you know, like real, yeah, definitely. There was even, even in the later stages, there was the makings of a good uh, victory for the attackers. 
Uh, I don't think anybody can be like too upset about what happened there. I don't think anybody can be too upset about how they played. I think, um, yeah, like it was it was just little goofs from a lot of the attackers and just a lack. Uh, I'm gonna say a lack of goofs from the defenders, but I that's not to say that the defenders didn't goof up. There are a few times where I really think the defenders goofed up. I think, to be honest, the Ventral one, um, if I had to give out an MVP slot, <laughs> I think the Ventral one really did uh, did help out an awful lot. MP Becker and me had some solid, solid stuff done, though, to be honest. But, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty dicey for a good bit of that. I think maybe... Like... I, I, I was interested in Gondor's armor comp, uh, composition, but I stated my issues with it. Are you running to the center, Monkey Tron? Oh, sorry, Captain Douchebag, no. Um, like, he can't win at the center of this map. Uh, oh, is it, are they actually falling back to the... Come on, boys. When you've got this sort of... I, I, I really feel that when when you have got this sort of advantage, just, just stay, stay in it. Um, there's no point in running back. Yeah, okay, they, they're, they're getting stuck on it again. Um, but yeah. So I think that this could have definitely gone in the way of the attack. Oh yeah, sorry. Gone to an armor composition. I liked it, but that really is is the type of farming composition that you you need to make sure that your allies are, are, are very aware of what you're doing. Um, if it was me, I would have gotten rid of the Pinnathgill and Cav. Espe yeah, especially if you've got Rohan on your team, like, um, it's, it's, it's risky enough to take one Lancer to an attack, but, but we had three there, and that's, that's too much, definitely, in my mind, so I just think that we've got a bit of counter-battery fire going on, that's quite fun, um, I should probably zoom in on this action, be, uh, be a lot nicer to see rather than just sort of staring into the void. Uh, but yeah, so I think that that's part of it, for sure. Um, and I don't think anybody else's army composition upset me at all. But yeah, I think it was Gondor, just those two Pinnathgill and Cav. Could have gotten rid of them and grabbed an elite infantryman. Um, kind of of your choice. Preferably the Nimlothian Honor Guard, I would say, just for the, for the dwarves. If, if, if a Nimlothian Honor Guard got in the face of some dwarves with that EP spear, jump, 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 really doing some good work. But even the uh, the Wardens of the White Tower, I know a lot of people don't like them, but if he was to start messing up some uh, some Mirkwood forces, that could have been really good. So, yeah, Pinneth, Gill, and Cav, I, I just wouldn't have taken them. Um, but no, the rest, the rest it, was, it was interesting, but I just think that you know, if you're going to do something like that, you need your boys to be aware of it. And they, because they need to know that you are going to be attacking slowly, really slowly. 92%, yeah, that was pretty damn close, really. Um, as I say, it was clear the way that it was going to go for, for the past, sort of, you know, good 10 minutes, but, no, but that, that was still pretty damn close. I like that. Um, yeah. Uh, then, unlucky about losing the Troll Drummers. Um, as I say, I usually, I usually would just not shoot them, but I think when you've got elven accuracy on your side and you're standing that close, like yeah, shoot the troll drummers, <laughs> um, and that because that just destroyed the the poor orcs' morale, and they just were bolting uh, throughout the throughout the fight. Um, yeah, no, uh, but oh well, certainly not too bad. Uh, Will we end up with yeah 92 again sindar they're still standing general there from uh, dorwinian has just dropped from the last of his last defenders the medicine guard bravely fighting in amongst that i really like that that was fun um but yeah cool so um clear victory i don't know man that was somewhat close for my liking um let's have a look at what we got here for bilbo Anything really crazy? Uh, Athala ranges, of course. Um, sometimes I'd always rec well, I'd, I'd, I'd often recommend you know taking two rangers. Uh, it can really sort of hurt your budget, but um, yeah, it's generally worth it. Even if you got another unit of rangers racking up like 300 kills, you know, 250 kills, you know, it's it's certainly not too bad. Um, and then yeah, Dragon Slayer still have a lot of killing to do. 
Ventral one there. Actually not racking up as many kills as I thought, but ugh, look at him, prisoners these guys caught. Poor gobbles. Um, it wouldn't have just been goblins, but would have been a lot of civilians from Rohan too. But yeah, um, of course you can't just rely on kills. Um, Ventral one didn't kill too many goblins, so that's, that's what it's largely about. Um, but no, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Then Stillo, yeah, that was unfortunately about the troll drummers. Um, maybe could have tried to use his general instead of throwing his general into the melee. Maybe his generals and his bodyguard. And the White York Fearmongers is a cool unit to take as well because they do have that morale buffing effect. It's nowhere near as good as the troll drummers, but it is a morale buffing effect. And they can look after themselves pretty nicely in a fight too. So that's a good, good thought. Uh, to, to consider. Um, then Monkey Tron, yeah, I've got no real issues with Monkey Tron's play there. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing I could really think about. And uh, Master Blaster really going in, getting stuck in hard early on. Uh, as I say, maybe, you know, maybe seeing what 2-Up was going to do, maybe just holding back a little bit, letting the goblins die for you letting the dwarves take a bit of ammunition for you but he did have a lot of numbers there he had his civilians he had his poor quality eastmark spears so that that was some good work captain douchebag yeah i think maybe pressuring his bridge could have been nice even if you weren't going to march across i think using your archers on your bridge could have been good you're a villain archers just to take a bit of a beating there i know you can't march across the bridge and spread formation so you are going to take casualties because you guys are so tightly packed but you know it is what it is somebody's got to die and for Darwinian it's got to be the Avellan because they've got the armor for it yeah um and then two up yeah spent a lot of time talking about that but uh yeah all in all thanks for that it was a pretty hefty one today boys so hopefully you powered through and uh, I'll see you later